Cascade! Hey, hey, Pacific Northwest Pokemon region? Yes, please. Here's a big playlist with all the videos about it in case you've missed any. A year ago, we basically finished the Cascade series, but now I just have some updates as well as some things I just straight up forgot. And I wanted to make sure I show that off before starting our next Fakemon project. So, the Fakemon, or Lockemon, that we hadn't really talked about before well, now it's their time to shine. Especially Umbralu, that one's really sparkly. But as for that new Lockemon region, well, I have a few teasers on my Twitter with the project name Project96. But here's a new teaser before we get back into this main video. Auburn, we've picked up strange energy signatures in the old GR district about 40 kilometers east. On your way back, you should be able to handle it on your own. Just be aware, there's no backup for you. Stay on Route 205. The dragon might attack. Sorry, putting this on you during your first solo mission outside, but I think you and Trail are ready. Make me proud. Over. Yes, sir. Nothing too out of the ordinary, huh, Drill? Wait, that's strange. The energy reading. The scanner has no idea what type to associate with it. But that's a pretty concerningly large reading. It is heading right for us. Get ready, Drill! What was that? Edgy garbage. Look at him, he's so cool. He probably wears today's sponsor, the Raycon Everyday Earbuds. So look, getting all of this art made and all of these video assets thrown together, it's expensive, so I am extremely grateful for sponsors. And your views, of course, because they help us get sponsors. And also, I love you. Raycon's Everyday Earbuds are stylish, comfortable, and affordable, coming in at around half the cost of other premium audio brands. And they've got eight hours of active playtime and a total battery life of 32 hours when using its charging case between uses. Meaning, yes, they will probably outlast the switch that you are easily connecting them to via Bluetooth. And just in case you decide to go jogging while exploring a game world simultaneously, they won't slip out of your ears thanks to their advanced gel tips forming a snug yet comfortable fit. Here's me shaking my bacon just to prove it. Gave myself a headache. Plus, it's the future like our upcoming Lockemon project and they integrate with digital assistance and have an awareness mode. We know your surroundings. <gasps> to better help with the noise isolating. <sighs> it's no wonder they've got over 49,000 five-star reviews. So don't wait. Go to the link in the description or just type buyraycon.com slash Loxton and get 15% off of your Raycon purchase today. Anyway, Cascade Pokemon. Weather goes nuts in this region, but I feel we didn't introduce enough weather-focused Lockemon designs. We had an idea of borrowing a few older designs from Dark and Windy to help balance that out a bit in the game, and we may still, but to introduce a new one, Here's Umbralu, a dark water type. So one aspect of Pacific Northwest culture I didn't really mention was the sort of apathy towards rain. Like, it rains so much here, and yet so many people refuse to use an umbrella unless it's absolutely downpouring. But just your everyday sort of rain? Yeah, no biggie. Rain is great. While it's nothing too serious, there's actually a minor cultural hatred towards umbrellas in Portland and Seattle. 
What, do you think you deserve all that space on the sidewalk because you're scared of a little water? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? And you know what? I'm gonna say Cascadians are the same way. Cascadians in the big city poke fun at Umbrella users, which in turn led this Pokemon to cast itself out and hide in the darkness. So right away, there's a good excuse to make an Umbrella Pokemon be dark type in this region. And then we throw in some elements of the Vampire Squid, which sort of has Vampire Cape umbrella e tentacles, so it just works well. And then it works doubly well because of actual vampires themselves, because you see, Umbralu has an always glistening body that over sparkles in the sunlight, which it hates. So it summons rain clouds and blood moons to avoid this. And this particular aspect of Umberloo's design is of course a reference to the cultural icon that was the Twilight series, featuring glistening vampires in Washington. And Umberloo's signature ability, Petricor, causes either rain or a blood moon to have the effects of both so long as it's on the battlefield. And to know what those effects are, you will have to check out our video explaining all of the new weathers. A weather for every type? Yeah. And also to make Umberloo that much more more vampiric, the only way it can feed itself is by sucking the nutrient-rich water out of Pokémon. As such, its signature move, Dark Depletion, is essentially Giga Drain, but does double damage on water and grass-type Pokémon. And speaking of grass-type Pokémon, this is a feed. A cute little bean that's actually a seed, and that always is in need of feeding. But it's also an aphid, making it bug grass type. Like real aphids, they live in swarms and infest plants in large numbers, sucking out their insides, destroying crops. In this case, berries. You see, berry farmers are very wary of aphid, making sure to kick them out of their fields even if there's only one. Because where there's one, there's actually many. And that drip right there, that's some sticky slobber inspired from honeydew. Some aphid species poop it, and it's super sweet. And some ants are actually known to farm aphids like dairy cows to take and eat it. Isn't nature beautiful? After eating enough, aphid sprouts wings and becomes Maslifo, a mosquito with leaf wings. But instead of sucking blood, it sucks more sap and glucose from plants, mainly trees now. And instead of a bean or a seed, its body shape is now based on helicopter seed pods, which are all over the place up here. And really, like, everywhere, but here too. Uh, and they fall from trees, blowing in the wind in very large quantities, just like Muslifo. And they are always in swarms, like a swarm of mosquitoes. And people hate these swarms the same way people kind of hate swarms of punks. Hence the little grass mohawk and the whole sucking the lifeblood from society thing that they think they're do wanting and doing, but like they're not. And and uh, also when people see a Muslifo approaching, they say, oh, we must leave. We must leave. Oh, this place must must leave. Oh, uh, well, it uses its wings to spread its influence as far and wide as it can because it's about to evolve again. Now it's an ecroach, a punk cockroach still oozing with honeydew. Its plant parts are just grass. I've mentioned before that Oregon is the grass pollen capital of the world, and like unwanted cockroach infestations, small pockets of grass growing out of cracks in the concrete are also unwanted. And these ecroaches, they seem to be actively and purposefully encroaching on human cities, which makes plenty of people scream when they find one in their home. Eek, a cockroach! They pop up like weeds across the city, seemingly trying to make nature take it back. Sort of like the tree hugger liberal hippie stereotype that's fairly common, or at least stereotypical, of being in the Pacific Northwest. Eekroaches are little eco activists in a way. A more violent way. Oh, but if they do manage to totally infest a place, you get their infested swarm form. Sticking dirt and bark together with their own bodies and honeydew, they create a tree-shaped battle tower. And they are much stronger this way. In battle, it's functionally just wishy-washy. If they come out at full health, you get this big tower, but once they fall a bit much, they all scatter. Like shooting tear gas at protesters. Please stop killing the planet? Uh, no, have some tear gas. Now, we're also finishing up some Lockemon designs that we felt were a bit lacking, or could use a touch of something more. 
you'll find plenty more in-game, which is coming along nicely by the way, I'm very happy with its progress, and we'll save some of these for that. But they are mostly things like Prevost Cascadian Pokémon, like these Cascadian Solosis and Duelgen, shaped more like the head of a bear because of tardigrades, or this Lowland Snover. It's just a Snover with much less snow. But we're also adding some new ones to bring in whole new elements. For instance, here's Moss Grat, an evolution of Monster, our Moss Hamster based on the Moss Balls that dot rooftops all across the Pacific Northwest. While cute on its own, it felt like it needed something to flesh it out more. So here we made it a much bigger moss ball, or even a Mariamo ball, which is actually algae rather than moss. So of course it's grass water type now. It's soaked. It soaks up as much water into its fur as possible. And rather than a small hamster, it's a big old muskrat, which is basically a beaver without the wide beaver tail. But they do love the water still. And them being wet all the time leads them to look like they have a little bedhead constantly, so we also gave Moskrat tired eyes, which also poke through a goggle-shaped skin pad. I don't know the technical term for things like these. Uh, but being so tired all the time, the tops of them start to fade due to the sun and them not really moving much. And uh, there's also a rare red variant of Moskrat. You see, some parts of the Pacific Northwest will have huge red algae blooms where the algae in the water gets all red and dangerous. It's not a super common occurrence, but we felt like since Moskrat is kind of mossy algae-esque, Maybe it should have something to reflect that. Now, remember Bear Voyance, the psychic ghost familiar spirit bear that uses bone-throwing future sight? Well, we thought it needed a Prevo, seeing as it looks so old. So this here, this is the adorable little aura cub, a similarly typed bear cub that acts as an oracle. It is still a witch doctor shaman of course though, albeit one in training, but instead of a big bone staff, it has a little bone baby rattle. It's so cute. And also it's gray to not reveal which color of bear voyance it will grow up into. You gotta evolve it to see. Have fun with that, it evolves a bit late. I mean it is an old man bear, so of course. Now, Vitasquash was a favorite of mine. I mean, it's Bigfoot, a Sasquatch, except it's also a vineyard farmer and winemaker, using its big feet to squish the grapes the old-fashioned way. But some of the game's devs felt it wasn't quite big or cryptic enough for a Pokemon based on one of the most famous cryptids of all time, Bigfoot. And I'm inclined to agree. And they fully developed this idea of rags to riches being a rare reality itself too. But here it does so, going from a grape stomping farmer to a snobby Hayden. And after many versions, here it is, Dionysior. In the wild, they are incredibly rare, essentially reserved for only the leader of the group. And of course, it's a Sasquatch, based on the trope of Greek and Roman rulers being fed grapes and wearing a wreath of grapevines. The grapevines around its torso resembles the sash of a toga, and its name combines Dionysus, the Greek god of grapes, wine, harvests, and intoxication, hence also its new poison type and intoxicate ability, which makes normal type moves become poison type, and it mixes that with connoisseur which is an expert judge in matters of taste. The word is commonly used by wine snobs to describe themselves. Just look at this happy face! And this Caesar-style thumbs up, like Caesar at the arena given a thumbs up or thumbs down based on things. And also, to make it even more rare and cryptic, it doesn't naturally evolve at all. Rather, you have to find and use a rare item called the Bacchus Laurel, Bacchus being the Roman god of wine. And to get it, one would have to go through a big Bigfoot hunting style side quest. Oh, <laughs> what fun. The kinds of things I wish more Pokemon games did. Now, in the plot video, I brought up Cascadian Golit and its new evolution, Golgur. But I didn't explain them really, so let's do that. In Cascade, Golits are just as ancient as anywhere, but rather than ground ghost type, it's just ghost. Its main body is based on an upside down Chinookan basket holding various souls inside of it, and atop its head is a Clatsop cone hat, which were also worn by the Chinookans. When I was in school, I remember learning so much about Native American basket weaving. It's a big thing here, and so having a man-made Pokemon represent that just makes sense. But. It's evolution. 
Golger is a creepy looking golem beast, ain't it? Now ghost rock type, its woolly fur is entirely frayed wicker, and beneath that it's just solid cursed stone. Said to be imbued with the souls of those who once protected the sacred cave it now inhabits, defending it by draining the soul energy of its enemies. Most obviously, its body shape is based on woolly mammoths, of course, who actually roamed the Americas well into the same time period that Egyptian civilization was a thing, and it has short, arrowhead-shaped tusks on both sides of its trunk, which really looks like a big pointy proboscis. And this weirdness is actually because of its primary inspirational source. This is the Basket Ogress, or the Zunuqua, a mammoth-sized woman who steals children, trapping them in her basket, and later eats them. A mythological monster from the native people of what today is southern British Columbia, most notably the Kwakwakawak. And this is why, despite being mainly mammoth-shaped, it still has long toes and even full hands with which to grab you. But yeah, while most depictions of her make her more humanoid, looking at some of the original descriptions would leave you with a depiction like this one. And that's just so strange, right? She's extremely hairy, has large, sharp stones decorating the sides of her mouth, like tusks, and that mouth is very long and used to suck the brains out of kids. Some speculate that stories about mammoths are what inspired this creature. And over time, since mammoths eventually went extinct, it started becoming more and more humanoid. And honestly, I think finding obscure and very different mythological creatures and making a Lachemon out of them are super cool. And yes, its stone trunk is rigid, it cannot bend it, but it can easily be used to peck and stab. Like a mosquito, it sucks away your soul. <laughs> or I guess like a, a, an elephant trunk sucking on up water. And hey, maybe when the game comes out in a year or two, you can find a secret Loxton somewhere in it for a super cool battle. Maybe indeed, that would be quite cool. So, of these final new Cascadian Pokémon that I'm showing you in this video, which is your favorite? I heckin' love this smiley Dionysure, even if I can never spell or say it right. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure to check out our deep dives into the design origins of real Pokémon, and subscribe to see our next Lockemon project, which should start this summer. Pokémon Neo Legends gets this, huh? A mouthful, maybe, but so is like every other T-rated JRPG. That's the gimmick this time around. What if Pokémon was a T-rated action JRPG? I hope you enjoy it, and until then, never stop using your noggin.